Hallelujah. Please turn your Bibles with me to Matthew chapter 28. And I'm going to read from verse 18 to 20. Matthew 28. And I'm going to be reading from verse 18 to 20. I'll make this as quick as I can. Because we have activities to run with. Okay, let's 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 um go with these the bible says and jesus came and spoke to them saying all authority has been given to me in heaven and where on the earth verse 29 it says verse 19 rather go therefore and make who disciples please note this make who disciples of all nations now when you make disciples of all nations what do you do baptize them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit hallelujah what do you do after that teach them to observe all the things that i have commanded you and lo i am with you always even to the end of the age amen amen means so shall it be now today i just want to share with us something simple the blessing of baptism my emphasis today is water baptism hallelujah because there are three dimensions of baptism or three types of baptism in the scriptures you have the water baptism you have the holy ghost baptism and then the third one which is less talked about is what the baptism of suffering amen that's the three but i'm not dealing with any of that other than the water baptism now what is baptism in itself because we need to understand the word before we actually you know um get into the detail of it i'm going to just do it simple touch on some of these things i've um, discussed these with the um the the, the our brethren who, who are getting baptized but i just want to highlight a few things for us baptism in itself is not necessarily an english word it's a borrowed word from um the greek amen it's a borrowed word so it's not necessarily English so it is from the word baptisma amen therefore it is important we understand what the Greek word baptisma means so it's like baptisma in 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 in, in Greek but in English is what baptism so it's a direct translation therefore the meaning was is not even explained to us so it is important we understand the meaning of it of what we're talking about hallelujah Amen. because if we do not understand the meaning a lot of confusion comes into these kind of things where you have debates on what how you baptize or who you baptize or where you baptize and things like that So you see, when you see those kind of direct translations, for example, let me give you a simple example. In Spanish, in English, Jesus, uh, the name Jesus is Jesus, isn't it? But in, 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 in Hebrew, what do you call him? Yeshua. You see, I remember somebody one day who was uh, part of the membership class that I was, I was part of a church. I was signing off a membership. And um, this person, <laughs> you remember that? Huh? The person insisted that why, my, why, why must you call him, why, must, why, why are we calling him Jesus? We must call him Yeshua. 
And by that, she refused to be a member and she walked out of the membership class. In fact, I was, I, I was so thankful to God. It was shocking to me. Now, in Spanish, what do you call him? Jesus. 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 Thank you. What are we doing is the same translation. We're just translating name based on human tongue. Amen. Amen. I remember a young boy once. I asked him, what's your name? He said to me, Ogolua. I'm like, oh, okay. Ogolua. I said, what was that? So I just took it like that and I went to think about it. And I said, oh, his name is a tribal name from Nigeria, the western part of Nigeria, and is actually pronounced Ogolua. Can you see the translation? Now maybe he goes into Spain and they will call him another thing based on what? The dialect. So basically, that's the I'm just trying to explain that baptisma is just simply translated baptism. So what is baptisma? Baptisma is from two words. One is a noun, the other is a verb, so to speak, depending on how you want to use it. It is from the word baptizo or bapto. Baptizo simply means to what? To whelm, to fully cover. That is to fully wet someone. Are you getting what I'm saying? So it means to cover wholly with a fluid. Now, this is the picture. Have any, does anybody know what it means to dye a cloth? When you're dying, what you do is what? You dip it into the water and make it soaked so that it can catch the color. That is baptizo. Are you getting what I'm saying? Huh? In Greek, what you're doing there is what? You are baptizo. You are ba you, you've just baptized that thing. If there's a word, if I can Englishize that word, if I can anglo anglonize the word. Are you getting what I'm saying? So that's what it means. It means to fully wet. Therefore, the word does not mean sprinkling. Amen. Amen. Please follow me on this. The word does not mean sprinkle. It means fully wet to whelm someone. You know when you say I'm overwhelmed by this. It means you're fully covered by it. Are you getting it? Good. I have to define that so that we understand it. It means to deep. It means to fully immerse. Okay? And it's not in the context of religion. It's in the context of what? Language. Okay? It's in the context of what? Language. Now, there are two kinds of baptism which kind of explained last week. Two kinds of baptism, water baptism rather, two kinds of water baptism. Now, we have one which is everybody, and you know, people mix this up a lot. People mix this up a lot. We have the baptism of John, and then we have the baptism of the believer in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. We have the baptism of John and the baptism of what? The believer into Jesus Christ. Give me Acts chapter 19. I'll touch on that. Then I'll tell you, share with you the blessing and then we'll finish from there. Acts chapter 19 from verse 1. Acts chapter 19 from verse 1. And it, came to, and it happened while Apollos was at Corinth. Huh? I'll tell you about this Apollos. The why Apollos was at Corinth, that Paul, having passed through the upper region, came to Ephesus and finding some who? Disciples. Whom did Jesus say we should baptize? Disciples. Make disciples of all nations. Then what do you do? You baptize them. 
Good. So he finds some disciples. And what did he say about to these disciples? He said to them, he, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So when they said to him, we have, so they said to him, we have not as much did what? Heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. Now, follow me on this. And he said to them, into what? Into, into what then were you baptized? That's a serious question. Into what were you baptized? Because if you are baptized into the Lord Jesus, and Matthew chapter 28 tells us what you are supposed to be baptized into. It should be baptized in what? The name of what? The Father, the Son, and what? The Holy Spirit. But now we have disciples who do not know the Holy Spirit. At least if you are baptized, you should know and have heard the Holy Spirit. At least you should have heard that word. But here they are saying, we believe the Lord Jesus, but we have not heard the Holy Spirit. Why? Because Apollos was in town. Apollos was the preacher who preached to these guys. He was an astute man of God. He was a preacher of righteousness. But all he knew, all Apollos knew until the likes of Priscilla and Aquila came across to him was what? Was the message of John the Baptist. And he was preaching that there is one who is to come. His name is the Messiah. He's going to be and you need to repent of your sins. And he was preaching so fine. But when Aquila and Priscilla saw him, they had to take him aside. And then they taught him and showed him the word of God of how Jesus came and how the Holy Ghost came. But before Aquila and Priscilla came was when this happened. Therefore, all these disciples knew, they believed the Lord Jesus. They knew that Jesus was going to come. But one thing they didn't know was the Holy Ghost. Because they were not baptized into, they were not baptized as a believer. They were baptized into the baptism of John the Baptist. Because the baptism of John the Baptist is what? For repentance. Amen. Amen. The baptism of John the Baptist is to declare repentance. Hallelujah. Amen. But that of those who are in Christ Jesus is not for repentance. And let me say this to you. The baptism of John the Baptist does not, it does not access you into the kingdom. It's not a baptism of the kingdom of God. Because the people who got baptized at the time of John the Baptist did not believe in Jesus. They went back to their own sin. They went back to their own ways. Do you understand? And that is why Jesus will say, you baptize them how? In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. But they didn't have that encounter. Therefore, there is need for another kind of what? Baptism. Let's continue in this scripture. Now Paul said, John indeed baptized with the baptism of what? Repentance. Saying to the people that they should, should, they should believe on him who is to come after him. That is on who? On Jesus, on Christ Jesus. Verse 5. When they heard these, they were baptized, how? In the name of the Lord. Can you see? So when they heard it, they now, Paul now said to them, this is the baptism that you need. When they heard that there is another baptism, they did what? They submitted themselves to that baptism. Are you getting what I'm saying? The baptism of John is to awaken people and tell people of their sins. And then point them to the Messiah. 
So when they heard it, they were baptized in the name of the Lord, verse 6. And when Paul had laid hands on them, can you see? So he gave, there was water baptism, and then there was Holy Ghost baptism. The Holy Ghost came upon them, and they spoke with what? Tongues. Hallelujah. Can you see that in that scripture, you can see the two types of baptism there. Praise God. So, I'm not studying, I'm not, we're not going to Bible study. I'm going to skip a few things. Now, what then is the baptism of the believer into, into Christ Jesus? One thing I've observed in the scripture is this, whatever God has commanded us to do, he has already done. If God says you should be faithful, he is faithful. If God says you should be good, he is a good God. Are you getting what I'm saying? If God says you should preach the gospel, he's the first man to preach the gospel. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you must understand that everything God does, he sets the precedence. And Jesus will set the precedence. So why? Because if you understand the baptism of the believer, you see the blessing in it. I want to show you this. Give me Mark chapter 16, verse 15 and 16. It says, And it said to them, Go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized shall be what? Mark chapter 6, he who believes and is baptized will be what? Saved. But he who does not believe will be what? Amen. Now, he who believes and is baptized, is it an or? Huh? And. and. It means that there's a believing and there is a baptism. Hallelujah. Amen. It therefore means that there's a mandate on every believer. Every child of God to be what? Baptized. So, what then is this baptism? Very simply, because you must understand that Jesus also had to set the template. Jesus went to John to baptize. To be baptized. And that's where we'll see the blessing. Jesus went to John to be baptized. But his baptism is not a baptism of repentance. Because Jesus did not have anything to repent of. Hallelujah. Amen. The only reason why Jesus will go to John the Baptist. Is because the Bible says. The word of God. Was with who? John. John. Talks about the king. There was the king of Idumia. There was the Herod, the king of Tetrach, and the high priest Caiaphas, and all that. But his, the Bible says what? All of these people did not have the word of God. The word of God was with who? John. John at the time in his dispensation. The word of God is not necessarily with the public figures. It's not necessarily with your social media influencers. No. You must find who has the word of God and go to the person. Do you know how many miles Jesus had to travel to go and see John the Baptist? Hallelujah. Amen. So you must understand that baptism is something very serious. Now, what is this baptism? It is an identification with Jesus Christ in his death burial and resurrection amen it is an identification with jesus christ in his death burial and resurrection it is a public commitment to discipleship it is not repentance except you're born again Except you believe in the Lord Jesus and accepted him as your Lord and Savior. The baptism of the believer in Christ Jesus is not for you. Amen. Amen. 
All you will do is go in as a dry sinner and come out a wet sinner. It don't make no difference. There is no difference between you going into the shower on the bath and coming out. If you do not have the fundamental belief in Christ Jesus to be his disciple. When we are talking about disciple, there's a two difference between just believing and being a disciple. Being a disciple is what? An ardent follower. A visible follower. A vocal follower of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We must have that. On the basis of that, being a disciple, you can then be, um, be baptized. Therefore, if you are not willing to be a disciple, you have no right of being baptized, of this kind of baptism. Those who got baptized under John were not disciples. It was only two people that was recorded in the scripture who got baptized by John and followed Jesus. When John, when John was baptizing, he saw Jesus passing. He said, behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. And the two disciples heard him. He said, what are we still doing here? This man is done. Let's follow. Hallelujah. <laughs> it is a public declaration to say I have no life of my own anymore. My life belongs to Jesus. Because the mode of baptism is to be buried with Christ and to rise with him. How do I know? Give me Romans chapter 6. Let's see from verse 3. Romans chapter 6. Let's see from verse 3. Quickly. It says, Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus, can you see? Were baptized into his death. Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into his death. That just as Christ was raised from the dead the, by the glory of the Father, even so also you should walk how in the newness of life. So you are buried with Christ and you are raised into the newness of Christ. Hallelujah. Now, I did say that there are conditions of being baptized, which is what? Fundamentally, to be a disciple. What makes you a disciple? Number one, you must have heard and received the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. How your, you, how you came, how he, how Jesus came for your redemption. He died to pay the price of sin and death for you. He died as you, he died in your place. And was raised to life for your justification. And is ascended to heaven, sitting at the right hand of the Father. For your glorification. And my glorification. Hallelujah. Peter will say to them, he said, though, in Acts chapter 2, verse 41, he says, Then those who gladly received his word were baptized that day. Those who gladly received. So you must have heard and received. If you hear, there are so many of us who hear the gospel, but we have not received yet. The Bible says, Hearing that we hear. But not what? Understand. Why? Because they have refused to do what? Receive. You're set in your ways. Hallelujah. Amen. After you've heard and received, number two, you must believe the good news of Jesus Christ as the singular eternal work of God for our redemption. And for the redemption of the rest of mankind. 
the singular. A funny comedian once said to what one said on screen. He said, Ah, well, he believes in Jesus, but he knows that there are so many other ways to heaven. I said, Wow. Give us some GPS. Can you give us heavenly postcode? Maybe we might be able to locate it. Do we go by flight or we go by how? The Bible says in John chapter 14, chapter 14, verse 6, it says, what, what does the Bible say? It says, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. There's no man born of a woman who has made, ever made that statement. Hallelujah. No man on earth ever born of a woman who has ever made that statement. Therefore, the originators of any religion are false. Having believed that, you must also have repented, rejecting every sinful ways and evil association, turning to Jesus as your only Lord and Savior of your life. Acts chapter 2 verse 38, Paul was said to, uh, Peter was said to them, Repent, let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the redemption of sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And lastly, you must have a good conscience towards God. I wish time permits me to explain this one, because it has to do with the Old Testament. But Peter will also say in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 21, he says, there is also an antitype which now saves us. Baptism, not the removal of filth of the flesh. Can you see? He's not talking about removal of filth. He's not talking about repentance. But what? The but an ans the answer of a good conscience towards God. Through what? The resurrection of Jesus Christ. These are the conditions, friends. Therefore, I will ask this question because there has been controversy around these things. This is scripture. My simple question is this. Can an infant hear and receive the gospel? Huh? Can an infant Believe Jesus. Can an infant repent of their sins? Can an infant have anything called good conscience? All he wants is the mommy's, mommy's uh, breast, milk. That's all. The Bible says, repent and be what? Baptized. It's not the other way around. Therefore, on the basis of scripture, we can see that infant baptism is unscriptural. It might be denominational. Are you getting what I'm saying? Don't worry, I was baptized as a child as well. I have my baptismal card. <laughs> Hallelujah. But that is simply as good as just wetting the child's head. Nothing more. I'm only quoting scripture. I'm not hitting at anything. Are you getting what I'm saying? I come from that background as well. Until I met the Lord when I was a teenager. And I knew I needed to be baptized of him. And I said it's time for me to be baptized. Because that one. I was only baptized into. I was only baptized into a denomination. Do you know there are some places you go, you cannot be a member of that church except you have been baptized. We were doing a Bible study once on baptism. And somebody said, I've been baptized three times. I said, how come? 
He said, I was baptized as a child. I said, okay. The next day, with the church I was going, they said, I must be baptized to be a member. I said, okay. The next one again, I wanted to go and get married to somebody. They said, no, I must be baptized into that church for me to get married. I'm like, wow. You are so wet. <laughs> Yet not baptized. You don't get baptized into a church. You get baptized into what? Jesus Christ. So any church that tells you you have to be baptized to get into a church is a lie from the pit of hell. It is religion. It is denominationalism. Are you getting me? I'm not saying this is scripture. You are only baptized into Jesus Christ. Somebody said to me, how about christening? I'm sorry. I'm sorry to disappoint you. Except you are dedicating the child to Jesus. Except you are bringing the child like how Jesus was brought to the temple. Dedication is scriptural. You bring the child before the Lord after some days of being born and you give him over to the Lord Jesus Christ. But make sure you yourself are giving to Jesus Christ. Because even if you give your child to Jesus and you are not giving to Jesus, the devil is waiting for you at home. And you hand him over to the devil to raise him up. What's the point bringing him in front when your life at home is not, is not influencing the child? The Bible says, train up your child in a way he should go and when he's grown, he's not depart from it. But when you don't have the Lord in you, what do you have to give to the child? This is the reason why we are raising weak children in our generation today. Hallelujah. Amen. Therefore, we must have an understanding of these that those who get baptized are those who are all who, who get baptized into Jesus because we get baptized into all sorts into a different religion do you know even in Islam you get baptized oh yes I'm from a religion Muslim background my, my, my folks are all Muslims you know that you get baptized they wash your head and kill a cow and say one or two things and tell you to reply and then by the grace of God you're a Muslim straightforward easy so you're not the Christians don't have monopoly of baptism baptism is an age long tradition but Jesus used it as a tool to express eternal dimensions to us are you getting it? So, why then do you get baptized into Jesus Christ? What is the blessing of being baptized into Jesus Christ? Let us see. Whatever happened to Jesus is what is expected to happen to us at the point of baptism. Let us go to, and this is where I'm going to tie it up. Let us go to... Um, Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3. And I'm going to read from verse 13. Matthew chapter 3. I'm going to read from verse 13. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. And he and John tried to prevent him saying, I need to be baptized by you and you are coming to me. John recognizes immediately that this is a Messiah. I've got to be part of his kingdom. I've got to be baptized. I believe in him, therefore I need to be baptized myself. <laughs> but Jesus will look at him and say, Jesus answers say, Permit it to be so for now, for it is fitting to do what? Fulfill all righteousness. Baptism helps you to complete all righteousness in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Give me Romans chapter 8. Let's see from verse 1. Let me show you something there. Romans chapter 8, quick. Therefore, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus because we're already disciples. We are in Christ. There's no repentance needed anymore. Why? Because we are already in Christ Jesus. We're disciples who do not walk according 
according to the flesh, but according to what? The spirit. Come on, quick. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me what? Free from the law of what? Sin and death. Good. Now, for what the law could not do in that it was weak through flesh God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on the account of sin he did what condemned sin in the flesh why that the righteous requirement of what the law might what be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit how does the righteous requirement of the law is fulfilled that is exactly what Jesus said at the point of baptism well, for, how, how does how does he how is it fulfilled how by what baptism the righteousness, the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled to us who are what? Saved, who do not walk according to the flesh. The Bible says what? Those who believe and are what? Baptized. These shall be what? Saved. Saved. So, right, um, baptism completes, helps to complete the what? All your righteousness. That's one blessing that you get. It fulfills all righteousness. How many of us want to fulfill right, all righteousness? We want to fulfill some. That is the reason why you need to be baptized. So if you were baptized as an infant, you have not been baptized according to the word of God. You have not been baptized into Jesus Christ. You may have been baptized into something else. But it is definitely not into Jesus Christ. But now if you are in Jesus Christ and you believe in Jesus, it is time to be baptized. Really baptized. Did you get what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Amen. Now, secondly, let's go back to that Matthew chapter 13 because that's where we're going to see all the blessings there for. Secondly, Matthew chapter 13, let's just see from verse, um, let's see from verse 15, what does he say? Quickly. Uh, Matthew chapter 3, sorry, chapter 3. We're going back to that same scripture, come on. Okay, verse 15, but Jesus answered and said to them, permit it to be so for now, for thus it is fitting to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him. So we've seen that's one blessing. We're fulfilling all righteousness by baptism. Number two, give me continue. When he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, what happened? The heavens opened. You will see this when the scripture will relate it to who? To relate it to, to Noah. The scripture related this to Noah, Noah's uh, uh, flawed, talking about that we are saved through what? Baptism. The heavens opened. What happened in the flood? What happened? The heavens opened to them. That's why I always tell people, be careful which heaven opens to you. Because the first heaven that ever opened to a man was what? Was flawed. Be very careful. Which heaven opens to you? Hallelujah. Now, um, so that's open heavens. You have open heavens. There are certain things that used to be close to you. It opens. Hallelujah. <laughs> I remember when my wife got baptized. And I was like, is it 10 years ago? 14, huh? 2010, yeah. And as soon as she went into the water, it just came out, the power of God hit her so mightly. Wow! I was just laughing in my, in my heart. I said, ha ha, praise God. The heaven is open on this one. That's what should happen. That's what should happen. And I was saying, sharing with the admonishing the, 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 the our brethren who are going to be baptized this morning. And I was saying, what is your expectation? What do you expect? Amen. Amen. 
You see, people don't understand that the things of God is 90% your expectation and 10% ministration. That's why Jesus will say, be it unto you according to your what? Your faith. It's not according to my prayer. It's not how hard I pray. It's how, <laughs> it's according to your faith. So open heavens is one. Number three is this. There is a confirmation from heaven. There is a clear confirmation from heaven affirming you as a child of God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Look. When God says this is my son. Who are you to say otherwise? Are you getting what I'm saying? You get into a level of special breed of people. By simply being baptized. Let's, let's, let's read. It says, the heavens opened to him and he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove. Alighting upon him. The spirit of God is not a dove. The Bible says he's descending what? Like. It looks like. The symbol of it looks like a dove. Descending like a dove. Alighting upon him. Did what? And suddenly... A voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Let me say this to you. In the entire scripture from Genesis to Revelation, this is the only time you will see the full expression of the Godhead. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit all in one place. The Son went through baptism. The Holy Ghost came down upon him to confirm. And the Father spoke from heaven. Wow, you will never see that expression anywhere again where the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit were fully expressed in a, in, on a person's life. And it's only at baptism. What he's saying is this. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit comes upon you to take territory. Are you getting it? They come upon you to take territory. Many of us who were baptized in the past do not even know much of these things. So now that you know, you should appropriate it. Comes to take territory. Therefore, you become an untouchable. You become a food for you become you 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 enter into a special class. Hallelujah. Amen. Do we all get this? Do we all get this? So baptism helps you to complete all righteousness. Baptism helps you to do, I mean, it helps to create open heavens over you. There are some people who have been battling with certain addictions or certain habits gets broken at baptism. We've seen that. We've seen the power of God hit somebody. We've seen the powers, satanic forces re got released. Just simply by baptism. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Are we ready? Yes. Brethren, are you ready? Yes. Are you ready? Yes. Hallelujah. Let's rise and worship the Lord.